Okay, so yesterday was the big reveal of Call of Duty Black Ops 6 come this year in October on October 25th. I haven't seen any, so this is my first reaction of the new trailer and the Xbox Direct live event that happened yesterday too. So here we go, let's hit it. It looks like a classic Call of Duty campaign, to be honest. It's cool. It's probably more about CIA undercover in Iraq, US, um, than we saw a jungle mission. So, so what I think what Call of Duty does, as always, is they have their big toolbox, right? And from that, they you know, pick a tool and put it in a different setting, like maybe in a jungle, maybe in, in a desert, a town or whatever. Dive into it to immerse yourself into an action packed campaign. This is what it probably is. It's probably a good amount of hours to <laughs> shut down your brain and, you know, relax and play it for the sake of playing video games. I mean, it's nice, isn't it? If you like it, if not, OK, wait for multiplayer. So and this is where it gets interesting, I think. It's multiplayer powered. They had the direct event of um, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Well, let's just dive into it and let's see what it is about. And so I think they worked on that for four years, I think. excited to give you a deep dive into our campaign and global innovations across the entire game. Chopper, oh. Six, we really strive for striking that balance between real and hyper real, but we want to grow yeah, I am. our effects in realism. We find real world reference so that we can match that motion. Huge, the huge. Weight, the timing, then riff off of that. And you can feel like they want to go more realistic, you know? Has come to know and love from Call of Duty. Still keeping it as a video game, but at these elements of realism, nice. Every aspect of this game to deliver the fun and attitude players expect from the Black Ops franchise. Yeah, like always, right? Multiplayer is of course here and brings the Black Ops style and provides a playground for the brand new Omni Movement System. New way to push beyond your limits okay. and move like an action hero. Ooh, that looked, we'll ooh. <laughs> Round-based zombies is absolutely uh, back and better than ever. It you you not only break your camera, out, but your neck now too. That... With Black Ops 6, our goal is to create a more connected experience. Now I'm interested, man. Immersed across every single mode. All right, sliding, slide cancel, we fade. We at every corner to innovate and craft the most signature okay. Black Ops so I can jump backwards and still fire in that direction and move. That's cool. That's cool. While jumping sideways. All right. Oh, nice, dude. That opens so many more possibilities. This unlocks the ability to move like never before and seamlessly chain combat maneuvers. Dude, I see my neck break already. <laughs> and our enhanced supine frame in full 360 degrees range of motion. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Oh, this is huge, man. That you can sprint to the left and right. This is great. It's hard to do it in real life, but I think it is realistic, right? This unlocks the ability to move like never before and seamlessly chain combat maneuvers like slide. This is not. <laughs> okay, so this year again is um, what's probably one of the most interesting things in movement they going to change. So before you had to jump in one direction and then flip 180 degrees um, that made it so that the player, you know, flipped in this direction and looked like that when jumping and running in one direction and facing the direction you came from. Um, now what they do is you can run backwards, sprint backwards with your back in the direction, you know, you want to run to still maintaining your focus on the direction you came from. And when jumping, you still facing that direction. This makes a player look like that. This is going to be very interesting. I wonder if uh, you jump or let's say if you sprint faster backwards or forwards, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but this is huge. I, I think it adds a more realistic aspect to the game and even for your enemy that sees you doing it it's more predictable i guess than a player jumping in a direction and then making a 180 uh, degrees turn and still firing on you right so i like that so overall again more realistic to jump backwards and still firing than you know running and making 180 degrees midair I like that. I like that. This and this is what I think Call of Duty missed out for a while. 
So it looks like you can lean towards left or right now and peek uh, corners much better. And I like that. Not because it's more realistic. I mean, you would definitely in real life, you know, turn left or right. I made a video about how it, this is an advantage about peeking corners and stuff like that, because if we look at Call of Duty for what it's right now, um, you basically see as a, the enemy, first of all, the shoulder and arm before the gun and muzzle even peeks around the corner. And that means before you even see your adversary on the other side, right? You can get shot before you even see your enemy. With that mechanic peeking, you can avoid it. That could make it a little more tactically. I don't think so. Still, people will argue it's an arcade shooter and stuff like that, if that even exists. To do that, we deconstructed all of our gameplay, our systems and content plans and repeatedly asked how something could be better. In some cases, that led us to huge innovations like Omni. So uh, there's an issue I see here with the Omni movement. I think in general, it's probably a good idea. OK, so if but if you see this player playing here and then making the turn, I hope you can somehow see how you in what kind of position you are right now, because there wouldn't be anything more frustrating if you lay prone somewhere and you think you don't peek a corner or something like that but your feet are stretched out that wide in the open and everybody can see it right so this is what i mean this can have issues if you can't really tell in what position you are right now hit zones are regions on a character that react when taking damage or dying in past games we've only had four regions for black ops oh. Actually increase that oh oh my god oh okay okay so this is um i think to me the most interesting implementation uh they said they added new hit registration zones and i hope this means they add new zones damage wise and not only have these zones we had before, right? So that lines up with more realistic gunplay, more realistic movement. And now here we have more realistic um, hit regions, actually. And now they have arm a different. That is huge, man. And again, this is more realistic because, you know, if you get shot in your hand or your arm, um, you can probably still fight, so the damage you take is not that big if you want to transfer it into a video game. Still, it's a video game, you know? Um, but this means that we had the issue before where you shot somebody's hands, if, if they so stood sideways to you, and you shot their hands, they took the same amount of damage as if you would shot their chest. That just can't be a thing, right? And hopefully this here changes it, and changes all the damage values of the guns and it's going to be interesting it's probably more than ever it's going to be important to hit specific zones on a on a uh, body i think that's probably the most interesting part here in terms of what could change the game up to nine regions so we, now we can determine if that enemy was shot in their left leg or right leg, and then we'll play a bespoke death animation depending on that location that they were hit. Oh, okay. Okay. Even so the death animation changes. The player's movement and reactions are connected to the world based on their choices. A great example that really shines is a global feature we call corner slicing, where as you round a corner, yeah. you go through a pieing, slicing. It's going to dynamically rotate in the direction that you're rounding that. Oh, so you don't have to do Since that. It's dynamic. It'll be a bit more dramatic. Ooh. You're slowly clearing a room, but won't affect you Ooh. at all if you're barreling full speed around that same corner. Yeah, but you definitely you're can't avoid sliding players. <laughs> <set the bar. laughs> like what we see here. This. Like this. Um, this opens more, I think, fluidness to your movement. If you slide one way and you can, you know, still maintain that speed, um, even without sliding while you sprint and press the move left or right button, it makes it more fluid, you know. But all, also, on the other hand, I think there is a much higher skill gap that we will now have uh, in terms of movement. Um, I think for an average player, this could be even worse if they face uh, like movement kings out there, if you know what I'm saying, because it, it will be much harder to track their target. And especially and I know that conversation is on for a while, but if we take aim assist into consideration and 
if that doesn't break it, then it's even more an advantage for aim assist over mouse and key to follow the targets when people strafe left and right. Movement and animations in Black Ops 6. So like, again, on paper, it sounds good because it tends to be more realistic and adds more um, a variety to the game itself, how you can clear rooms, move, stuff like that. But in the end, it plays a role of how people will do it and will adapt it to the game. If, if it's like you have something in there, it doesn't mean everybody will use it. It could also be that somebody still slides around the corner because it's way quicker and you have to take into consideration FPS um, and, and everything like that, players' expectations. And then suddenly all of that doesn't really matter at all, right? So this is a gunsmith. Um, okay, we have the stats. And look at the attachments you can add. And it's one, two, three, four, and then another four by the looks of it. So that makes it eight attachments. So please Call of Duty, don't put in there 20,000 attachments, which nobody will use. Um, and they will just sit there and you basically end up using two attachments. Like, for example, take muzzles. We don't need uh, 15 muzzles. And then we can only use one or two. Make categories of, you know, recoil reduction or silencers, and then the rest is cosmetics, and they have all the same stats. That that will be fine. Okay, so overall, I think this is going to be a good move. It, it feels like they turned back some things there, like the prestige system we have, what we had in the first Call of Duties, and... Um, that's kind of a cool thing. I think that's what fans really want. And additionally, they changed things to get more towards realism uh, in terms of movement. Of course, still it's a video game, so you can't still slide. But have you tried sliding and firing a gun? It is. <laughs> I don't think you would do that so many times, right? But um, like moving sideways and stuff like that, that's probably the right move to do that, to add a, a, a more engaging feeling to the game and to add more fluidness in your movement and of course to add aspects that you have to think about uh while you move and that probably changes the whole dynamic of the game um like i said moving the direction towards realism still keeping that aspect of a video game and not a mill simulator uh, and and i like that variety that mix of both you know so I'm very interested in how multiplayer plays out in the end. And I think the movement gods out there, dude, you can't get hyped probably, but to all the average players, ah, I think there is a little more to learn and a little bigger skill gap. But overall, you can predict things a lot better with more realistic movement. So I think both sides have their advantage there and um, can be very... Uh, curious about what Call of Duty will be in the future. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, let's wait until we see more about multiplayer and especially about Warzone. And until then, I see you. I'll leave a like and subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.